If ever you've posted a photograph to Instagram to show your friends where you are, what you're doing, or maybe what you're having for lunch, you can thank Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger. Theirs is a familiar startup success story from Apple to Google and now Instagram. Two smart guys get together with an idea and not much else and end up changing the world. It was only six and a half years ago that Kevin and Mike launched Instagram. Last week, the platform crossed 700 million active monthly users. So how did they do it and where do they go from here? I got together with the Instagram guys for a Sunday sit down. Instagram was a startup idea whose beauty was in its simplicity. Take a single photograph of where you are or what you're doing, share it in real time with the people in your life, and give them an easy button to push to show they like it. That simple idea is now a global community. So let's talk about 700 million monthly users. You guys set out to do this six and a half years ago. Could you ever have dreamed being where you are today back then? No, I think we started you know, knowing that we wanted to bring this out to the world, but this is kind of beyond our wildest dreams when we were getting started back then. And I remember looking at Mike and being like, I think we're on to something. Meanwhile, he's stressing out trying to keep the servers up, and he's like, maybe. 33-year-old <laughs> Kevin Sistrom and 31-year-old Mike Krieger met while studying at Stanford University. Kevin already had worked at a company called Odeo, which later would become Twitter. He shared a desk with current Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. Mike had come to Stanford from his native Brazil. Do you remember, Mike? meeting Kevin at Stanford? I do, I specifically remember uh, talking to Kevin about Odeo. I was like, oh, you interned, you know, the company that became Twitter and we talked about it. We barely knew each other in college, but it was only when I had left my job at a small startup and I was like, I want to start something independently. I met Mike in a coffee shop and he was working on, he was hacking on a project and I was like, cool, he's hacking on a project. He, he seems really smart. While he still was in college, Kevin turned down an offer from a young entrepreneur to work at a company he was building. The entrepreneur was Mark Zuckerberg. The company was Facebook. And I remember meeting one of my mentors and I was like, hey, like, should I do this Facebook thing? Uh, and I remember the person saying, ah, it's a fad. In 2010, four years after graduating Stanford, System and Krieger got together to start their own company. What was it like on day one when it was you two guys in the coffee shop? Like, where did you start on that ground floor? We started in a small co-working space uh, called Dogpatch Labs, but it was basically on a pier in San Francisco. Didn't have heat, so late nights, I remember looking over and, and Mike's got on this giant parka with like the fur around the thing and you can see his breath as he's coding. <laughs> um, it, it, was, it was rough. Their first idea, a company called Bourbon, didn't work out. But they took what they learned from the experience and in the fall of 2010, launched Instagram. In less than three months, one million people had joined the open network. We basically stripped away everything and said, all right, if we want to just make this particular experience of taking a photo, sharing it, being really proud of it and excited to share it, and making that really quick, how do we make that incredible? As you sat there at your laptops and you were watching this thing explode, at some point, did it feel like, ah, this is getting away from us? We're not ready for this much success this quickly? We were sitting there watching us cross a million, and it was like, you know, 999,999, <laughs> and then it flipped to a million, and we were just like, did we just do that? Like, did it happen? Who is that person, and who are these people? I actually think we looked up who that person was. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was getting away from us. In some ways it still is, and your job is to just catch up with it on a constant basis. 18 months later, Instagram had 30 million users. Among them, some big names who fell in love with the platform. So as the company was growing, maybe even before you sold it to Facebook, who were the craziest celebrities who joined Instagram? <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, that person is using yeah. the thing we dreamed up. The you first one was Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, yeah. Snoop so was Snoop, the first? Snoop was Snoop. A, he really uh, like joined early and just, you know, early I think adopted. early adopters. And that stuff was... matters, right? Like Snoop makes it cool. He gives his stamp of approval and people flow in behind him. Yeah. Well, you've got a team of, you know, whatever, eight or nine at the time and Snoop Dogg joins. And then you get a message that Snoop's people want to come over to the office. <laughs> You're like, Snoop's people want to, I don't, I don't have people. Do you have people? <laughs> this still happens, right? So in the past year, I went to the Vatican 
and helped onboard the Pope. And you just realize like these people who are so influential in the world are using our product to get their message out in the world. Uh, and that's really special. That's got to be a moment when the Pope signs up for Instagram and you help him get on. Yeah. What's they, your password going to be? Your holiness? <laughs> right. And all he had to do is touch the sign up button. And I was just like, I really hope this works. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg took notice of what was happening at Instagram. He called Kevin with a second chance to come to Facebook. Less than two years into its life, Instagram was sold to Facebook in April of 2012 for $1 billion. How did those conversations initiate? What were the first talks with Mark about, hey, maybe we'll join forces here? Meeting Mark back in college, I think allowed me to know what Mark was about, what drove him, and we were 13 people trying to keep a site up. So the promise of joining this giant company with all this expertise to work on a social problem together, that was, that was the thing that really made it work. Kevin and Mike stayed on to run Instagram under Facebook. In a social media environment plagued by bullying and negativity, Instagram works hard to buck the trend, constantly adding new user tools. We believe a lot in giving people the control uh, to make sure that their space feels safe. So the ability to filter out certain words and comments, turn off comments entirely, block people that are making them uncomfortable or just being jerks, to put it really simply, is really important to us. Even with their latest updates, stories, and live, the oh, Instagram uh, founders so say they're just better. getting started on what's possible within Instagram, with designs on becoming a multi-billion user platform. Does virtual reality fit into this picture at all for you guys? If we could build a teleporter to take you to someone else's experience, whether it's a wedding you're missing or an amazing vacation someone's having, and allow you to experience that immersively, that's absolutely something that's on the horizon for Instagram. Kevin and Mike are moving fast into the future, but they do pause briefly to reflect on what they've built in less than seven years. Every day I wake up and I get to work on the most amazing thing in the world. I get to change 700 million people's lives every single month. That's crazy, and, and I love working with this guy. It's just, it's a dream, it's awesome. As Kevin and Mike pitched their idea to potential investors early on, they were told there's no money in photos. The co-founder's argument was that photographs on coffee mugs may not be big business, but photos as communication could be. Needless to say, they were right. To hear Kevin and Mike set the record straight once and for all on the controversial question of which is the first ever Instagram post, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And our thanks, by the way, to Ascent Lounge in New York for hosting us for that interview. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.